Alright, so in this one, we are going to be reacting to Goresh's ranking the top 10 best characters in the game, August 2024 edition, part 1. Uh, assumably, we would have a part 2 with Broly releasing in the coming days here, just a few days out on the Tuesday uh, night uh, for some people, Wednesday morning for others, the Wednesday reset basically, right, the Wednesday morning of for most. But for now, this is uh, with Omega Shenron's release, and I'll be honest, there's a lot of stuff I've seen the list already. There's a ton that I disagree with, and the more I disagree, the more we're going to go into detail, and if I agree, we're going to skip through. There's not much else to say. This is going to be a long video. I already know it's going to be a long video, so let's get into it. Let's uh, let's just skip on over from the intro to the top 10. All the intro is going to tell me is 14 stars, his own experience, yada, yada, yada. This will be my experience at, uh, you know, seeing gameplay, doing my own gameplay versus this, that, and the other. All that as well from an NAQ versus a JPQ. Let's see the differentials. Uh, I feel like there's a lot, and I'm pretty sure there is. Top 10. Let's get it. Number 10. Who are we looking at? Shared spa. Alrighty, so number 10, I'm actually going to have shared between two characters. This is not going to be 10 slash 9. I'm just going to straight up just call this number 10. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to point out what I think, and then we're going to talk about it. So UI, I do not think, is... Uh, Obviously, uh, on the list, UI Goku is a character. Actually, yeah, UI is nowhere even close for me. He's like 15, maybe 14, 15, maybe 13 on a list. Maybe. Uh, I'm not even sure if that's true at this point. But uh, UI, I feel, has uh, a issue of team because his best team would be, let's say, himself, Ultan, and I don't know, Kid Boo or Omega or Rage or whoever. It doesn't matter who the third is. But then if you run Kid Buu, okay, well, you're making your Kid Buu worse because you're not running anything for his equipment. So that just hurts you. Um, even more so than that, you are running into CMZ. And CMZ, if you're going to run into, let's say, Fusions, you are running into Omega Shenron on Fusions decent bit. So UI um, just doesn't have a perfect team. I would say that's his issue. And as well as that issue, he's not doing a great job sniping out any purples. He actually kind of fails about... Uh, a, a good chance in a match to just not snipe anybody at all unless your opponent is just playing worse than you like that's just a skill thing but UI I do not think is top 10 golden I think he's at number eight um maybe maybe you could bump him a little bit to a, a lower spot sure uh I have Omega Shenron at number nine so if you want to replace Omega to golden I guess. Number time, let's say number 10, number 9, not too far off. So UI is my only gripe here. Let me hear the reasons for him. Um, I have nine other characters on this list that I definitely think this is are... Top uh, 11. I would rank above these guys right now. Uh, so UI Goku, I think UI Goku definitely has lost a bit of his effectiveness just in terms of the lock yes. not being as detrimental to the opponent as it usually has been. Uh, Agreed. We have a lot of different tools to deal with this now. We have, of course, Super Saiyan 4, Gogeta's Gauge. We have Omega Shenron's Indestructible. Um, we have a lot of disrupts on just meta characters. The two fusing uh, Gogeta and Vegito characters have disrupts at half health. Um, so I think it's a little bit more tough to get tons of value out of the lock-in uh, yes. with this UI Goku. Correct. Uh, the upcoming Broly is actually going to have a very similar mechanic. So we'll we'll see how uh, that does. But, oh, yeah, he has UI's. Um, I think UI Goku is still shit. a very effective character. Uh, defensively with his dodge engage he has the sub count manipulation generates the green cards uh, uh, I'm, I'm nitpicking i know i am it's fine um do we call ui dodging defensive or sub count manipulative so better team wise than defensive like yes it is defensive obviously you're not taking damage and like yes obviously but it also is in my opinion, much more manipulative. You look at the sub count reduction that purple UI, MUI, this UI, rev UI can all offer. I would say that just to really differentiate, a defensive type of thing would be like evil boost key reduction or arts power debuffing or canceling buff effect. Those are defensive in my mind, at least. For UI, I would more lean toward this is a sub count manipulative thing. And defensive mechanics aren't really doing that. They're, they're kind of different line. It's more, uh, you could call it support. Again, I'm nitpicking, but I, I just, I like to differentiate those because I don't think UI's thing is matter of defense. It's just more, 
your stalling, which is better for your team, which allows your sub counts, which is technically like a team buff because you get everybody back in a better setting. And that's what every UI does. This is not just exclusive to Ultra UI. Every UI does this mechanic. And it's not defensive. It's just team-based, which it's good. It's just, it's not defensive though. I definitely still hits mate. pretty hard, just naturally during like typical combos. He can. So, he, he's um, a ramp up. I don't up, really think so this UI Goku has like, all of a sudden just fallen off a cliff or something like that. It's just yeah, he's he's runnable. They are specifically designing characters. Are let me just say, everyone that's going to be on this list, I do think is runnable. Obviously, I think there's units that are better or worse in certain spots, but everyone on this list is runnable. Even units that aren't on this list are runnable. It's just the positioning of them, right? Around this character just being able to enter the battlefield and snipe them out with like there being no counterplay every character coming out these days has some way to deal yes exactly with, that's, his problem. Uh, that's why he's not top 10 to me um, i could definitely see this character dropping off the top 10 potentially when broly After drops broly. considering that exactly. broly's a red yes. character but we will see uh for Frieza, i would be surprised if you is, is, is just cursed by being uh not on a lot of Curse. teams i actually think the yeah. opposite is true for frieza i think broly could actually really help uh frieza uh, they're mm -hmm. both Color, movie characters. Synergy. You can sort of make Coverage. a good movie core team with those two. Purple and red have always been two colors that... Work it seems cool. more uh, for Broly, I, I think. The, the intention is baby, especially baby returns. The baby, golden, and Broly, I think. You could do GB, obviously. But I think the intention is PO for Broly. So golden does obviously get coverage there against these yellows with Broly. So... He would go up in stock. Obviously, 10 is very low for him. I don't think he's down here. Again, I think this unit can do very well. I think he does very well right now. Nothing crazy. Nothing above, like, top 7. But I think he has a little bit more potential than number 10, right? Be well with each other. But as it stands right now, um, Freeze's comeback mechanic is obviously still very valuable. I don't really see that that uh, mechanic ever aging. Like, ever. <laughs> It's going to be almost a timeless mechanic. I kind Unless of they agree. eventually come out with some, some way oh, to okay. uh, either directly counter it. Like, if there's a character that, like, when triggers come back, you, like, you know, just kill the opponent or something. I don't know. The thing is, you can outplay it. Um, like, this is kind of slander toward Frieza, but that, that's true. You can out... Not... I don't know if the word's outplay. You can outmaneuver it. Like, the correct play since the fusions have released was if you face Frieza, you pop come back, then you fuse. Uh, that's not a counter to make it not timeless but it's a it's a solution you know how they drop solutions for this character and that character not counters like usb to cooler no 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 but like solutions so like here's endurance null forever because of uh you know uh let, let's say blue beast existed and then a full power frieza dropped and it's like he has endurance null forever so you can just rush with full power frieza and that's a solution the solution to Frieza is that you would just fuse after, which, which is what everyone does against Golden Frieza. Obviously, you can't always get that. Same thing with Frieza. You can't always rush with him. You can't always land the rush on that Beast Gohan that would have endurance, right? But there's a solution. So it, it won't get countered, probably, but they're making solutions already around it. Like, Gohan heals amazingly on green cards. Vegito, fuse. Gogeta, fuse. G4 heals a ton on his gauges. So, like, no one is truly impacted severely in the meta right now that I can think of that's, like, the top-tier damage guys by Golden's comeback. Like, it's still good, but it's definitely worse than what it was. But um, comeback's still very effective. It's just he's plagued by not having great team options right now. You can definitely run him on a powerful opponent with, like, Fusions and Masu could, could be okay. Super Baby 2 could work. Yeah. But... Yeah. Um, definitely not in as his teams aren't the best I agree first that. released and that's not really his fault it's more so just the teams around him aren't as good yeah, and also i think there's a lot of really good yellow now they characters are, that exist right now which would be a problem prior. so uh this Broly is wasn't good enough. if Broly was good enough Ultra would be a lot Ultra better Ultra Freeze, let's move on to number Broly's nine reason. next coming in at number nine we have the one percent sparking green evil boo i think this character so this is like the big one i disagree um Evil Boo, in no, no fashion of my mind, makes this. I am obviously going to notice a pattern. So will you, if you haven't already seen this uh, list on Twitter or this video of his own. Um, the pattern is rush control. Uh, they are very, very heavily uh, promoting and pushing. They always are. Um, the Japanese Q, they really like rush control. Like, more than the NA, more than the EU. It, it really is the Japanese Q. I'm not sure. Maybe it's the passive play style. I, I don't know. And Rush being obviously strong. But 
they really like rush control. They liked Python Gogeta a lot. The Japanese players liked Orange Piccolo a lot more than most people did. Like, they really liked that rush control, and they really liked that for a long time. I mean, for God's sake, I'm pretty sure Golden's only here because he has rush control, right? Because he has the comeback, and that's rush control. Evil Boo, well, let him, you know, let him go, but I already know what I'm going to say about him because I already know what this is going to be about. It's going to be about his rush control. Is very, very for a one percent sparking character, we typically don't see characters. Also, even boost top fifteen to me. Don't get me twisted. Um, so I think it was very, very nice of them to drop this guy, especially because they were very obviously pushing the Majin Boost Saga team throughout the anniversary, and yep. uh, they have not really had a lot of success in pushing Saga teams up until this point. You know, we've seen fair. a lot of uh, Shin, attempts to make cool. certain Saga teams during episode campaigns work, and they've always sort of fell flat because of the fact that the benches never are that cohesive. And yeah, I actually Saga argue that's one of the weaknesses yeah. of good. the Majin Buu Saga team, even right now, is it's very tough to get, like, a super cohesive bench working for them. It's a good blast um, bench, bad I think it's a bit bench. different right now because we have the Zenkai uh, Blue Kid Buu, and you could run this guy, and you could sort of make, like, a regen core bench. Yeah, with and that could sort of work to your advantage as well. Some shit. But in terms of Evil Buu's individual presence on the team, I think he is probably one of the main pieces of glue that holds the team together. His, his intangible box that he's giving to the the team he's providing to the team in the form of uh, disrupt he's increasing cost every time the opponent uses a card he has a uh, key reduction he has card draw speed down he has a disrupt at half health he's removing enemy buff effects when they use ultimates or rising rushes uh this guy is very very tough to kill even for characters like super saiyan 4 gogeta even for characters like ultimate gohan who are purple obviously uh like, I, I get what he's talking about, you know, reducing your key. It's a bitch. Gotta deal with it. Um, the minus card draw speed. Yeah, that could happen. But do you know how you just kind of, I wouldn't say negate, but have a solution. There you go. We could say that again. Have a solution to these things. A ton of these units, Ultan gets a card and key on entry. G4 will get cards because he has card draw speed. Probably more than even one sometimes. Or... Maybe you get unlucky, but they get usually a card and key on entry. So you just go around that key down, the card disruption down. You could just kind of segue around that. Not going to say you can just always 100 zero Evil Boo because you can't defense neutral. That's fair. I like the Evil Boo. I still like Evil Boo. But he has disrupt that's good for like maybe one or two first engagements. Because let's say you're going to run Evil Boo, right? He talked about a team, Maj Buu Saga slash Regen, whatever. Let's say Kid Buu, Evil Buu, and let's say Ultan, right? I know Ultan's very high up here. He's even higher than I would place him. Who is your tank? You know, Evil Buu's going to stop one or two combos. That's good. Let's say you're facing fusions. Who is your tank? He stopped one or two combos in the early game. Good job, Evil Buu. I'm happy for you. So what happens when I do a uh, G4 combo and all your disrupt to Evil Buu's gone? What, what do you do against fusions? Let's say I do a GB combo and your disrupt's going to happen in the early game and I got to fuse the GB. What is Evil Boo going to do in that se sequence? You can't cover change because I have assault chain, so Gohan can't do anything. Kid Boo's not a tank. You saw the Kid Boo. I can just rush you with SV. So what is Maj Buu Saga doing against fusions? I, I wouldn't say much, and I would say fusions with the three anniversary fusions is one of, if not the actual best teams. So while he has this disrupt that does exist, I'm not going to debate it. It is there. It's in the game, obviously. It's frugal to an extent, but it's not anything that's, like, otherworldly. Like, I think of a number nine slot, I'm thinking of, okay, it could be Raid Shenron, maybe even um, Shin to a degree. I I'm not sure about Shin, but I'm more sure about Shin than I am Evil Boo. Those units have more consistency in what they're doing, I would say. At least in the, you know, defense neutral of, uh, Ray Chenron into the team heal, into the support, into the green card, blue card, into the paralysis, into the constant paralysis procking multiple times in a match. Those things, I would say, are much more tangible and game-changing. Let's say I get a paralysis proc. When they have a G4 ult and I have my paralysis proc right there, right before they actually get to throw it. Because my Ray Shenron got paralyzed on them. That's much more game-changing than Evil Boo reducing key one or two times early game, isn't it? I, I would say so. So I'm kind of just hazy on Evil Boo here. Again, his color doesn't help my, you know, situation to like him. He's a green. 
this is two purples that are going to be in the top five. I, I don't know how I could put him in a top 10 if he's having that sequence. Like, if that weren't just an early game thing, because it really is just an early game thing for Evil Boo in most sequences, then I wouldn't be fine with him. But he has no other tank to run alongside. Because, again, you're running Kid Boo, Evil Boo, Old Ton, most likely. That's most likely your trio. That's the best three range-based units probably trio. At least, theoretically, if you're putting Evil Boo there. He, he's your only tank. Gohan's not a tank. Kid Boo's not a tank. He heals. They both heal a lot, but they're not tanks. So you have to let him tank. But after those disrupts are gone, who's your tank? Someone's dying, and it's going to be him. It's always going to be him. And it's not going to save you. He can't save you. This guy could definitely be an issue. He goes type neutral. He's destroying Dragon Balls on his ultimate. He's, doesn't, he's doing AoE damage. He has the lock-in when you have a full Boo Saga team. There are a lot of things this character is doing that... You can no one runs full boost. I got to know that in the game, and they just won't he be wants. able to do those things. So ah, that's wow. what makes this character nice. valuable, valuable, in my opinion. And then on top of that, as well, he also has a blast cover change, which I think is a pretty underrated thing right now, um, especially when you're running him on a team with a character. It's good that has if a you face Kid Boo, but he's not that common. Available, and it sort of keeps your opponent on their toes. As you're to what most they likely running with. a strike based team. So um, most I have likely, very positive experiences using Evil Boo. I think whenever. Um, I fight against an, an opponent, Evil Boo. I always sort of feel like, oh, great, I got to fight this guy now. Um, and that is also contributed to... I see, I get that feeling to a degree, just to a lesser extent. I actually feel that more with Rage because, like I said, it's going to be a long video. We're pausing a lot. Um, I feel that more with Rage Shenron. It's like, this paralysis shit can fuck me over. If I just get paralysis at the wrong timing, I could just lose the match outright. So that, that's the thing. I feel that same presence he just explained of like, oh, great, I got to deal with this fucker. Exactly. But I feel that's such a higher degree with Rage Shenron than I do Evil Boo, because I've been fucked over by Paralysis a ton, a metric fuck ton. This guy reducing my key is just like, oh, all right, I gotta land another combo. It's whatever, it's annoying, sure, but it's just, it's like Sin, it's like Shin sealing your cards. It's annoying, but it's not gonna, most likely, change the outcome of everything, everything existing in the entire match. Paralysis... It gives the opponent a free combo for procs. They just spam strikes. It's not hard to do. Disruption, it's not giving you a free combo. It's just ending someone else's earlier. It's good, but the other's just better, in my opinion. To, uh, my, my ranking of him at uh, number nine on the list. I don't think I had Evil Boo on the prior few lists, but that's because I think I've seen a lot more Majin Boo Saga teams being used recently. Um, and I think, hmm. actually, That's indirectly, LF Omega Shenron's release has sort of helped the Majin Buu Saga team uh, a bit because it's uh, allowed Kid Buu to become a lot more, uh, not, not a lot more usable, but it's increased Kid Buu's value a lot, which helps the team overall. How did so, Omega uh, Green Kid Evil Buu is a very good 1% sparking, number 9 on the list. We're going to jump I don't into understand that. number 8 now, okay. which, again, Whatever. I also have 7 and 8 as a shared oh, spot. Oh, it's a tie. So number 7 ah. and 8 on this list is going Who's to be here? a shared spot. Okay, we... okay. So I have changed my opinion drastically on this. I actually had Kid Buu number 7 initially on my top 10 when Omega dropped, but uh, my, my my opinion has changed drastically after using Kid Buu. Even with Omega Shenron existing, you run Kid Buu with Ultan, who fucking cares, right? These fucking greens are whitewashed losers. They ain't doing shit. I think Kid Buu is far above CMZ right now. Um, originally, again, I had CMZ 5, Kid Buu 7. Now I'm thinking Kid Buu is number 5, and CMZ is probably like number 6, maybe number 7. There's another character in there. Probably could assume who. Probably gonna be the next character on this list. Um... But, uh, yeah, Kid Buu, far above CMZ. I have more of an agreement on this than not, and this video is already very long. So we'll just move on, but I do think Kid Buu is not comparable to CMZ right now. I think, actually, after Broly, it gets even worse because, well, another red dropped. What's CMZ going up? He's actually going down, probably because Broly probably better than CMZ. Kid Buu goes up because it's another red dropping. So Kid Buu, stock going up. CMZ, stock going down right now. I think Kid Buu is far superior. Uh, regen slash Ultan lead Regen is a very strong team. It's very powerful. And Kid Buu is one of the most free units in the game right now. I think bar none, especially because his coverage is fantastic. And he even covers other characters. If you run him with Rage, he is obviously covering Rage via, you know, blue to yellow. Covers against the red. Gets covered by Ultan. All coverage there for Kid Buu. He's safe every game. He loves it. He's even safe from Rush sometimes via old time so kid boo much higher than cmz right now originally this would not be crazy to me the cmz kid boo equivalency but i do not think we are there anymore especially like he just said majin boo saga much more often 
I don't know if he's running actual Majin Buu Saga, by the way, running into actual Majin Buu Saga, because, like, I don't think people are running Evil Buu that much. Maybe they are. I, I don't think they are. They would just run a better third. But nonetheless, Kid Buu, stock up. CMZ, stock's going down. Let's move on to number six. Coming in at number six on the okay. list. Okay, well, I have a agreeance again. Uh, number six, I literally have Baby right there. Maybe I would swap him right now for CMZ. It would be six, seven, CMZ slash Baby, and it'd be just like a tied situation going on there. Uh, Baby, his stocks clearly will be going down soon, but with Omega Shenron and everything else, GT is, it's okay. I, I'm not really a too big fan of GT because GT, while it has Indestructible, it has G4, I don't like Omega Shenron on a strike team. I really don't like him on a strike team. So, yeah, Omega probably fits on Core GT. I, I just don't like how that roster feels. Omega Shenron doesn't really do too much besides provide indestructible. And maybe you can argue that's enough. I just don't like that that's all he provides. Like, he doesn't ever outstandingly do anything when I face him on GT. And I face very high star Omega Shenrons. Um, a lot the last few days here, actually, like, ridiculously, and, uh, again, he's probably core with Baby and G4, probably, but, uh, I'm just not the biggest fan of GT, but nonetheless, Baby is on GT, there also is Yellow, Yellow, Blue, you literally could run, it's been a thing since part one, GB, SV, Baby, like, you're not, you know, pressed when you're running that, you're, you're chilling, like, CMZ is not that common, I would say, uh, Kid Boo's actually pretty fairly more in my opinion and even more so than that g4 is every game you got two yellows like, yeah g4 can kind of go through them if sequences go badly but more likely than not you could probably get them out of the way before things go hairy but nonetheless baby number six got him same spot let's move on to number five i am not even sure who's here and i know i won't agree because my number five is cmz on this list five <laughs> all right so number five is going to be fusing go Gita blue this character is so I clearly disagree. Um, I think most people were kind of looking at this and number two and being like, they swapped. It's interesting. Um, I could see this happening and being the case, even maybe even lower after Broly, number five, GB. I I don't, I, I'm going to listen. I'm going to try to, you know, understand it, figure it out, his side and his take. But uh, I do not fathom any sequence at all in my brain right now, how they could be anything below the top four. I could get it. I, I could really understand if there are number four slash three. I, I could get it. I mean, I have that number three. But number four, I could understand it, right? Sure. Number five, though? No. Um, that implies someone, and uh, it's probably the next character, I'm pretty sure, is above them, and I cannot fathom that character being above them in any regard. But uh, let's hear it. I'm curious. Still, I think in a very and if the good reason is they're not core on fusion, but it's a bit strange. I don't think that's enough. I actually, don't think they make core fusion warrior. Right. Um, with the release, of I did not listen to this video prior. Just the one know. thing that the fusion warrior team really was lacking <laughs> oh. was rising rush uh, defense, some sort of endurance character. So while I agree to a degree, yes, you want rising rush safety. Uh, obviously, you always do. Everyone wants rising rush safety. You always have rising rush safety and revival in endurance and yada 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 every single meta we would try to have it agreed that is what you want do i think fusions needed that look just just hear me out real quick so we got one red in cmz right that's just the, the one red right now it's the only red on the list it's the only red gonna be on the list so what harm do you have in just hear me out you run gb sv ug4 you let GB pop off early game, if they're going to throw their rush, GB dies. That's fine. You're auto-fusing with SV. It's what SV wants. It wants an ally dead. So, clearly, you don't want to always have to sack off an ally. Uh, understandable. But if that's what the unit kind of is designed for, where, okay, well, I got my GB to do pretty good damage in this match. Now, unfortunately, they caught me once, and gosh darn it, they rushed me. I think that's fine. Because it suits SV to get to SV because he's a little bit more pressed to get into his fusion. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes. And GB is probably the better early game damage dealer than SV. So while they are susceptible to the rush, 
they would be the team that's like, ah, shucks, I got to get rushed. I just don't think them being the one you throw to a rush is the worst situation because they're so easy to use and so free to use any setting prior to that rush happening. Like, you're going to get rushed. I get it. If UG4 already ulted, you sack him. Sometimes. Depends the situation, right? Maybe it's double yellow. You sack him. If you have it where GB, you know, you couldn't get the fusion or you just happen to have it or your SV, you're about to get a rush and there's no greens. Okay, you sack off GB. I, I don't think that's a dilemma. I think they would still at least arguably be able to be core. Maybe you leader slot old ton at that point. Sure. You want rush safety. But, uh... I don't think them not having rush safety on fusions is enough because when you ran this team, when UG4 first dropped, I don't think people were saying like, well, this team needs a lot of rush safety. Like this team would be amazingly broken. It was right. The best team when UG4 dropped, if they had rush safety because the rush safety unit, which is clearly Omega, which is going to be the next character, I think um, he's not fit for the team. He doesn't. I already talked about it. He doesn't like strike-based setups. But whatever. We'll get into that when we get to Omega, which is probably next. Um, my point being in that little spiel is I get it. Rush safety. You want it. I, you love it. I get it. That's why Evil Boost here. That's why Golden's here. That's why uh, XYZ is here. Got it. Great. Love it. That's why number two is number two. Got it. Great. Love it. But the character does want, in SV, does want your ally to die. I'm just saying... GB is a good early game damage dealer, arguably a better damage dealer than GB. I'm pretty sure he is. I'm, like, pretty sure he actually technically does more damage than SV early game, uh, especially with the vanishing back. You could literally, like, triple vanish with GB. Like, it's, it's good pre-GB. But, and again, there's only one red. But I can understand the argument. I just don't think that's enough to revoke their core card from the team if you do want safety, I don't think Omega is also the option for rush safety via fusions. I, I don't like that as the option. Survival character, comeback, indestructible, and of course Omega being added to the fusion warrior team because they actually... Uh, I'm still not sure how I feel about the fact that he's on the fusion warrior tag, but he is. He's on the fusion warrior tag. Yes, um, he, he is has a indestructible, yes. and I think he does <laughs> pair up pretty well with what the fusion warrior team wants to do. Um, I think, in my opinion, the core fusion warrior team at this point is Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, Super Vegito, and Omega. And I unfortunately don't think Gogeta Blue is going to make the cut. I can't agree. There. I can't. Uh, you could certainly <laughs> opt to go with Gogeta Blue over Super Vegito on that team. Um, I think that definitely could work no, as well. You can't. I, I just think at this point, most people would agree that Super Vegito is the superior character to this yes, guy. Yes, he is. I agree. V Super Vegito is better because of his rush thing. Yes. Agreed. Um... I can't, I can't with the Omega thing. I, I've faced it. I've run it. I, I've tried. I can't. I, I cannot have an outlook of Omega that is that high prestige with him being a green. I, 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 I don't, I don't have it. I, I just don't have that. I would just prefer having GB. And if you don't want to have GB, but you still want rush safety, you can build Ultan strike based. I, if you can build Omega strike based, you can definitely build Ultan strike based. And that's what you're doing. For Omega, right? Because he has to be strike based here. The team is strike based. And I would just say Old Time would just be a better character in general over that. Purple, purple, blue. You're chilling there. Be honest. G4 doesn't give a fuck. SV just rushed one of the fucking characters. You're chilling. Like, they don't give a fuck to face mono yellow. You'll still fucking body them. Especially because Old Time also doesn't really give a fuck at some point either. But having Omega there over GB. I I do not have the confidence to say that because of his coloring, because of what he's meant to be as a ranged unit. I like him on regen or PO much more than I'd like him on fusions. I think he's a nothing on fusions. He's an indestructible bot and value, sure. But is that enough? Not to me. But again, I'm not going to really go too hard on this guy because they, they do still work very well in this guy. Like, you're not going to see a supremely vast difference in results if you decide to go with like this character over Vegito on Fusion Warriors or this character over Omega on Fusion Warriors. I just think Omega brings more to the table that the team needed than this character. 
And that's why I had to bump them down I a could little understand bit on the list, even though I, I do still that. think they're a very effective character right now. Bump them down a little. Um, they're still going to work really that. well in like movies. The five, I think, they're is still going to work really well on uh, just like all-purpose Saiyan teams, God Key teams. Um, overall, very good character. I again, we'll what see what God happens key? when Broly drops. I <laughs> think it's going to be a bit tougher for this character to stick it out just because. Yeah, of after Broly, anti- I could understand aesthetic. five, six, seven. But, uh, overall, now I, I definitely do. I have think to say, top four is looking to age pretty well so far. Uh, just again, I, I don't think they make the cut for for optimal quote unquote optimal core fusion warriors, which is why I, I had to drop them a little bit uh, down on the list here. But still a very strong character. Fusing Goju to blue. Let's move on to number four. Number four is going to be LF Omega Shenron. So this is the the big one. Uh, personally, this is the the biggest gap I, I had in this. May, maybe not. Maybe Evil Blue is, but I think it is. Um, Omega, I had number nine. Um, I don't change that. Uh, not at all. But again, maybe you could argue him number eight. I, I don't really give a fuck who'd be number eight, Omega or Golden. I, I really don't give a shit. Omega has better teams. Golden has better, you know, individuality, I would say. Sure, let's say he's number eight peak. He's still four off. Um, top four is very different than top eight, uh, obviously. Again, I, I don't like him on the roster that he is going to be intended for most players to be using which would most likely be fusions i don't like him there i don't like him there i don't like him there gt i don't even really like him there that much but i understand him more and at least on gt he's safer right or at least uh yeah because you're running baby so obviously you have the anti-purple guy right in baby and he even has snipe potential and that's great but on fusions he has no safety he's just an indestructible guy Maybe he'll reduce your key a little bit, do a little bit of damage, but overall in a match, I get it. He's not meant to do this crazy damage and kill. That's Vegito. That's G4's, you know, entire existence and their role. Got it. But I don't think how little he does output substitutes for how well Indestructible is right now. I, I don't see the the one-to-one. -one. Maybe it's like a, a half-to-one correlation, but the one-to-one, -one, I, I do not agree with that. Just... Outright. on the newest LF character to join still the game. Very low for I me. definitely really do think they designed this guy very well. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of like RNG mechanics like paralysis and faint. So I'm not really a huge fan really of like the faint aspect of this guy. Just pretty much game. everything else Kibu, I do really like. Fused fusions. Um, I guess the only other choices I have for this just, character just is the blue card being a projectile. I, you can definitely make some plays out of the fact that it's a projectile. But you know, I funny like, enough. That's actually a benefit to him. Um, I know people don't like projectile blue cards. There, There is some sequences where it's bad, obviously. But in a lot of units, you look at Ultra Omega, his green card, um, the, the, the pre-tag SV Vegeta, his blue card, and Omega, his blue card, and even Ultimate and Final Flash as well. Um, all these projectiles, their intent, I think, for a lot of the time is not meant to land the blue card. Though, the thing is you do is you strike, you sidestep to where it's a drop combo, and then you do the blue card. Well, they're going to sidestep. They're scared. They don't want to get hit by a blue card. It's a raw blue card. They don't want to get hit by that. They see the exclamation mark. They sidestep. They can't react in time to do anything, especially against indestructible. They're not going to fucking rush you because you have indestructible. Um, and then, boom, you just get another free combo. So I actually would say maybe it's not the greatest one-to-one -one benefit but i i do think projectile blues offer more of a uh blues uh, blues not not ultimates i don't like it on ultimates because the ultimates are obviously meant to hit the blue cards i don't think are but i think they offer more of a a a goodness to the character i wouldn't say it's you know saving them or anything but you know pre-sv getting a combo reset and getting their tag switch and getting all their fusions and all that shit you know you're taking a raw blue that's gonna hurt like a motherfucker from this guy or pre-sv that shit's gonna faint you or hurt you like a motherfucker. Like, you just gotta take it. And that's a good thing. Or you're gonna take a combo reset, which is gonna do even more damage, and either end up getting you rushed or end up getting you killed. It's not a good thing. There's no winning in that, especially if you're the opponent. So I do think projectile blues are actually better than not. They just require you to think a little bit more, which I don't think is a thing people wanna do, but that, that's what they require. Just you have to use, like, your knowledge of the game. I've preferred if it was just a normal like range i would card. not his ultimate uh, sure this guy is very card, no. No, very no, no, strong no, 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 no. his I like gauge his the like fact that. that you gain a dragon ball at the beginning of the fight i've seen so many instances you realize how much of a buff that is to 
to Vegito, to fusing Vegito. Fusing Vegito is, is starting the matchup with one extra but, yeah, Dragon Ball. It helps him. It, he I've just seen people it. get rushes in 12 counts <laughs> using the combination of this guy plus uh, fusing Super Vegito. And that basically almost then? leads to a guaranteed kill sure. unless the opponent is also using Omega. Maybe. So. I think Omega, like I mentioned in the previous section sure discussing that, the uh, Fusing Gogeta Blue character, I think this guy actually ends up replacing Fusing Gogeta Blue yeah, on I just want optimal to core this. Fusion Warriors. And the main reason is because he brings a lot to the table that, you know, Gogeta doesn't bring to the table. Gogeta, a lot of times, is just damage and the ability to penetrate through Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's gauge. Yep. Uh, I mean, to be fair, Gogeta Blue also does have a very good typing right now. Again, we'll see when Broly drops, but for right now, yep. it's very good. Uh, Omega does bring a bit of um, more, I guess, a uh, utility to the table in the form of uh, Rising Rush defense with Indestructible, Survivability. I think Omega has a better two-way game than Gogeta does, right? And, and what I mean by that is he's pretty good offensively, but he's also really, really solid defensively. I don't think he's You can good sort of decide how you want to use his gauge. Uh, remember, when you uh, have I've never seen Omega shut down and press me on damage. Him and I'm just saying. Combos with him. He's going to heal and he's going to reduce the enemy key and he's going to be disrupting. Like this guy is a pretty good, well, a pretty well-rounded unit. And um, you can get go for the faint on the blue card, which I've definitely won many games off of getting faints on the blue cards. A lot of people aren't aren't fans of that mechanic. I personally am. <laughs> it's funny he mentions the faint on blue, which is also RNG. But Rage Shenron's not mentioned, despite Paralysis being as equivalent, if not even more so, because it can multi-proc in, you know, settings. It, it Faint is a better... It's, I mean, rather, Paralysis is a better Faint, because it can multi-proc. But Rage isn't anywhere mentioned. That, I find that very... I'm not really a huge fan of that mechanic, but like, if it works... If you're going to compare it one... Works, then it adds to the strength of the character overall. the other. I think he works really well in tandem mechanic. with characters like Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta and Super Baby 2. In fact, that's my go-to GT team. Uh, that's the team I'm probably going to use this season to go for God Rank is uh, GT. Yeah, GT is featuring this character, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta better. and Super Baby 2, because they all work for super him. well with each other. I would say. The subcap yeah, manipulation essentially better. means that Omega will always be able to swap in when the enemy goes for a Rising Rush. His Indestructible will activate. He'll gain yep. another Dragon Ball. He'll get extra damage buffs. And remember, his ultimate is buffing. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's ultimate because when he pops his ultimate, he's giving ultimate damage and blue card damage to the whole team. So imagine, again, that kind of fits the unnecessary boat to me. G4 always Super Saiyan 4 shots, Gogeta's not ultimate doing combo comp. Uh, that's SVG4 yeah, it, it, things. It's pretty crazy. Just, and like they exist, that, but they're um, unnecessary. This guy isn't in my like completely dead in the water versus Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta either because he does every single time when he swaps in get type neutral. For the first yeah, but he's not going to hit well again. You're talking about him on GT or Fusions. He's he's a blast unit who wants the debuff. He's not hurting G4 that badly. Like, he'll do damage, but it's nothing. It's nothing comparably to what we're actually used to on damage nowadays. Like, it just isn't much. So you can actually come in, pop your main ability, and just straight up kill Go Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta with this guy's ultimate potential. Yeah, so. I, 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 I don't know, I don't overall, know about all that. that that's a bit really of a stretch. Overall, and I think he fits very well on core Fusion Warriors, core GT. He fits well, uh, I agree. Opponent. He works really well core, on, core, on the core region and set well. up with Kid Buu and maybe Super, Super Baby 2 as well over there, so... Just a really good addition to the game. He helps a lot of different teams, and I feel very comfortable with this guy being number four on the list. So with that said, let's move up to the top three, and we'll start with, uh, of course, number three. All right, so for the top three characters, I'm not going to spend too much time going over each of them because at this point we've all... I do not agree. Uh, I think most people are also in this boat where Vegito is your number two, most people would say, and you could assume Ultan is number two. At this point, G4 is number one. Most people would say Vegito is number two. I I'm actually curious about this because I, I don't know how he has Ultan above. Makes them numerous. I could assume Rush safety, right? That's why Omega is top fucking four. Times. Uh, number three is... Notice how there wasn't much said about Omega. There, there was kind of like glazing on the damage, which he's not doing so much damage. But he was just talking about it's safety. That's enough. Like, that's kind of the summary of that. Like, he was talking about damage, but like, realistically, Omega does not hit that hard. I Again, I face many Omegas. Since the release of him, uh, high star, low star, you know, whatever, he doesn't hit that hard. He hits okay. It, it's okay. It's okay. It's like Revival Super Gogeta with less cards because he has like triple card speed at some point, double card speed, whatever. Omega hits like similar, but that was never some crazy fucking damage anyways. That That's the point. It's just, it's just safety. I don't think it's enough to validate him. I'm going to be fusing Super Vegito, who I think... 
probably got hurt a little bit due to Omega Shenron releasing. Oh, they do work together uh, really it's well. It's because Omega's kind of so high and then the indestructible like can't rush as easily. Omega releasing. Yeah, um, I, I, but I, do I don't value Omega like him, so that's why I don't more agree. More negatively than positively. Although, again, they work really well with each other, so it's really hard to say one way or the other. But, uh, of course, you guys know how well this character works uh, on Fusion Warriors. On mm -hmm. They work really well on Boo Saga. Again, I think I... Specifically for Boo Saga, I'd probably prefer, honestly, the Kid Boo variant over this character on Boo Saga. But, I mean, yeah. this character's going to work well on pretty much any team. You can build Blast Base, anyway. they don't care. They have even uh, stats. Subcount manipulation defensively. They have the full card destruction ability to have health. I mean, this character has a lot. Fuse Super Vegeta when you get into him and you pop his main ability, get the special card. So they only go down because Omega exists and he's putting Omega so high. If Omega weren't so high, he would probably be number two still. This is all comes down to Rising Rush, which Rush is a powerful move. I don't deny that. Motherfuck. I mean, that's why Old Tom's number two here. It's because of Rising Rush. Cancel buff effect. That's why Evil Blue's even on the list. That's why Golden's even on the list. Because Rising Rush is strong, obviously. But it also comes down to the fact that do these units have enough of a kit outside of that rush to validate their placement? I don't think Omega does. I don't think... Evil Boo does, especially because it's color. If he was a different color, maybe. Could talk about it. And Golden, I think, is actually a little bit downplayed here. But uh, he definitely does, right? But, uh, yeah, no. Omega, Evil Boo, no. SV, you're going to say he goes down because of Omega. Sure, I, I could understand the, the, the thought process. I don't see, again, I'm just going back to Omega because it's kind of the stem of the... the uh, talk here where omega yes is a green indestructible but i don't think that validates enough I, I i just don't maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong i don't know i don't think omega validates enough to be this high from my experiences the um which all stems to sv being low this character is hitting so hard this character i've seen Actually, one shot two. full health all right, number two is going to be LF yeah. Ultimate. Old Tom, once again, uh, I don't even know, actually. I was going to say post Broly, maybe you could say he's there. Sure, but no, I don't think so, actually. Um, Old Tom. No, SV definitely is number two post Broly. Old Tom, again, he, he's valuing. We're going to, he's going to mention it. He's going to value the rush. Go, huh? I'm not going to. That's go it. into excruciating all detail it is. here because you guys all know how this guy Let's works. I'm actually really not a huge fan of this character. I really don't enjoy fighting against him. This is a character where you can sort of just, you know, spam blues and greens from full screen and you can probably win a lot of fights that way. Uh, yeah. This is certainly Omega Shenron's biggest That's obstacle, fine. I think. Um, you know, Drop Omega combo. can come in, you can go type neutral for a few counts, but this guy is dead. debuffing, can't swap, can't. healing, well, can't swap. and removing enemy buffs else. when the... Uh, when you go for an ultimate against him or a blue card against him, so it's tough for Omega to really finish him off or even do, even do significant damage against him. Yep. Uh, he has a cover change against strikes, which works really well in tandem with like Evil Boo, who has a cover change. Do, do you see the blast. issue there, by the way? Omega can't do anything against him, and then you're dropping GB for Omega, and Ultan's number two. And if Ultan is making Omega struggle, what do you think G four is making Omega do? It's struggle as well. Do, do you see why I can't see him number four? You're replacing your option to kill the top two units on this tier list for a character that offers safety. Is that worth it? I don't agree. Yeah, both cover changes, so you really don't know which one to go with a lot of the time. Uh, this guy works really well on the Boo Saga team, which once again, I'll mention, I've seen a lot of uh, more people using the Boo Saga team recently. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy with Kid Boo and Evil Boo, or you can throw on Super Vegito as well, and they all work he pretty well together. He won't even mention... It was regen. very obvious from the beginning of the 6th anniversary. Leader really Ultime Regen. The Saga Rage. Even like the free play Why is Rage not mentioned? It's a pretty good um, option for that Boo Saga team. Rage, so bro. Increasing the amount of dragon balls over Rage? Come getting. on! Mention um, Rage! Jesus Christ! Gohan He's good. Definitely aging He's good enough. Very well moving Just like forward. shit and Evil Boo. Similarly to Blue 17. Although I think probably Blue 17 will have, it. at the end of the day, have aged better than this character when, you know, in their respective eras when they released. Probably. Because I think Blue 17 with Probably. the Double Vanish was crazy for the time he released. Plus also, also Ultan, uh, he might get some um, buffs, actually. Who knows? But yeah, uh, so and then I guess we can talk about, lastly, just the craziness that is his main ability into the ultimate. Hurts when, Omega. Um, Super Saiyan 3 Dragon Fist, who actually is getting an easy... Uh, Same easy, thing as Dragon Fist, yes. Zenkai. Uh, I believe his Zenkai will probably release on the 21st. 
It will. Uh, that Dragon Fist. Correct. But when that Dragon Fist first dropped during the fourth anniversary, you really had to, from second one of the fight, make it your mission. You were on a quest to get this full Han unique cage free. active and to set up the ultimate. The same exact situation just for free now. Gohan yes. literally just presses the main ability and he has the same effect. Yes. <laughs> Dragon Fist. Yes. Spending the well, entire match well, investing well, time. Well, 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 let's, let's dial it back a little bit here. Um, yes, to a degree. Um, the difference would be Dragon Fist during his heyday, and this is why he was top five. He was stacking damage while doing all that. Right? He had a cover null, he was stacking damage. Then his ult would probably do like a G4 ult does nowadays, right? It's just most likely one shot 99% of the time because it's a raw ultimate. Gohan, I don't say his ultimate's bad, but if I'm thinking a G4 ult to a Gohan ult, Gohan's ult is not 100% of the time one shotting. I would give it a solid 70 maybe 75% it will one shot just just kind of how it is i get the drag fist comparison but more accurate would be um man i i guess you would do a drop combo main ability and you catch them sidestepping that that's more accurate it's a similar vibe because gohan's not stacking like he gets his attack gauge sure and that's when you want to do the ult because it's more damage but unless you're doing a green card prior to it, and you don't make greens unless you do a blue, which that would end the combo. Um, th this is more in line with like a drop combo ult via a normal character that's not ramping up than like a Dragon Fist G4 type. Because those are just raw, and their multipliers and their damage behind them is so high. Ultons is not comparable. I, I think it's close, but I don't think it's fully comparable. Like there's better comparisons. I'm, I'm nitpicking, I know. I'm just saying. It's you had top to make sure you were in the nitpick. right spot. You had to make sure you weren't, um, you know, fighting against somebody who could survive it, like a potentially like like a strong purple character or something like that. This guy literally just Dragon Fist was neutral. You so press the main that, ability. I don't think that matters too much. Ultimate, and there's not really much the opponent. And there was no purples like that were a, running. You know, decent spot with Gohan on the battle. Yeah, it was like purple beast. What he's not so, living shit. Um, <laughs> Ultimate Gohan, I think, is in a really good spot right now. Even though there are definitely a lot of good yellow characters that exist, it's just crazy. It goes to show how crazy they made this guy. Yeah. Um, fusing Goju to blue definitely can be a problem for this guy for sure. I think he's probably the biggest weakness that this Gohan can encounter. Uh, but on the flip side of that as core. well, Gohan can simply just one shot him with the. With the main ultimate so yeah he can but um, the thing is with that you're not gonna get that probably uh, i'll be honest again i don't think gohan one shots too much comparably to the others so you could say he could one shot them sure but pre-sv you know let's say you have one of them four let's say they're all 14 stars well you have double hp there just outright you know you leader gb or sv maybe you'll leader gb because there's more purples running around right that's double hp with sv bench you have triple HP, maybe even Gotenks. So that's 4x HP. That's giving you 12%, 20-some percent, 10%, 10%, 10%. So you're getting, what, 50-some percent plus equipment, which is probably going to be like 65 to 70% HP. Pre-GB, let, let's say it's full. Let's say it's even 80% of health. I don't even think they die to an old tunnel, but that's raw. The raw drop combo old tunnel. And even if that is the case, why would you let gb take it you could swap at that point to drop combo you wouldn't let gb take it anyways so uh, saying they he could just kill them I, I don't find that to be true because i'm thinking about the hp thinking about you would just swap anyways i mean preserve your g4 gauge and don't let it happen you, you can also do that I, I don't think that's accurate at all that old time was just oh he could just kill them prior no especially in gb hell no old time's not killing from even 70 percent on a GB. In pre, 80, maybe 75, probably doesn't even kill. No. It, it's overvaluing Old Tuntle. It's strong. It's very strong. Don't get me wrong. But he does not do enough damage behind that ultimate in its own merit. That one card, it's all that matters. Right? That's the vanishing rule card. Um, or main. It's a card. It does not. It does not. It, it cannot. It Mathematically, it cannot. Especially because impact damage reduction when you click a card via GB pre or post strike you're taking less you you don't die you do not die from very high uh, even decent health when you're using gb to old tunnel i feel comfortable with having gohan at number two i think a lot of people have noticed and understood how good this guy is um at this Top. point so 
Top three uh, we'll arguable. Number one, then I think it's pretty obvious Top who that's going to be. Okay, surprise, surprise. Number one Probably is four, Ultra Super Saiyan 4. Then this, I agree. I got nothing to say about this. Obviously, everyone's going to agree with you. G4, number one. Even post Broly, he's number one. Even post probably the next LF, he's probably number one. Even post probably the next LF after that. Well, m maybe not the Ultra, but maybe the next L. Maybe the next Ultra is number one. Who knows? Maybe they'll try to counter him already. Who knows what they're going to do? Seems like they don't want GB running around with how Broly is designed, which fucking weird. GB is pretty healthy, but they don't like him, I guess. They want SV to thrive, which is one of the most toxic units in the game right now, which makes no sense because SV was already core, guaranteed. Now just solidifying more core, which stupid, but legends. Um, nonetheless, he's number one. But, uh, yeah, um, again, obviously things I disagree with. The main thing would be that Omega, if you're naming two top, like, I get it. The yellows aren't just murdering the purples with ease and leisure. You gotta work for it. Got it. But if you're also gonna mention that the biggest op to Gohan is literally GB, and then you're saying GB is not core, well, what do we do with them, right? How is he even top five? If he's not even core, like, what's he doing? He's stopping these purples, but he's not going to be core. I, I don't know what he's doing. Where, where is he going? Just a homeless guy that's top five? That just doesn't make sense in my mind. So I would say that is my main, uh, you know, disagreement here. Um, even if you don't want GB core, I've mentioned, you could just run old time. Just run purple, purple, blue. Like, you're fine to run purple, purple, blue. You don't have to be scared of purple, purple, blue. It is a team you can run very easily. I just ran it. And it does fine. Like, it's not hard to run. But uh, nonetheless, that, that's my only real big disagreement. Evil Boo, and I, I know where he's coming from. I get it. Rush safety. I get it. I heard it. I understand it. I understand the premise. I understand all of that. But if you're going to mention just rush safety and, you know, this, that, and the other as the only saving grace for this guy making it above this guy, you have to look at their kits at that point. And I don't think Omega's kit for right now with his coloring is good enough. And again, that's my also other point would be that Omega Shenron's too high. Evil Boo, it's the same kind of vibe where it's like, why would I ever take Evil Boo over Rage? I, I don't have a sequence in my mind that I can think of that at all. Uh, why would I ever take GB uh, not, or rather, why would I not take GB over Omega? I'm going to run into G4 and Ulton. I'm not going to run into fucking Kid Boo very common, right? And you're going to say Rush Safety. I gotcha. But if there's two purples and Omega is only neutral for a couple counts, they might just pop the indestructible fast. What, where's your rush safety at that point? It's dead, right? Well, now you just have a worse unit than GB. Good luck, have fun. There's two purples in your match. If not one, you're going to get fucked up at that point. You don't have any safety. <laughs> Goodbye to you. You know, that's kind of the dilemma that I see with that. But Nonetheless, some agreeances, you know, you look at Baby, CMZ, Kid Buu, kind of in that realm, even, you know, UGF to an extent, UI, I'm not, I'm not too keen on, like, I, I, I would just rather have Rage Shenron than UI, I'll be honest, like, I, I just think he has a better suited team than UI, uh, I know UI is better individually, but it's not about the individual, it's about how good they work together, Rage works amazing with Ultan and Kid Buu. That's a very good team. He didn't even mention that team, but that's a very good team. Same kind of premise as the Omega team, just a little bit, I mean, actually equivalent safety, and it's just more supportive. Like, it's a range-based, better, technically, safety of fusions. If not equivalent safety, because you would just sack off rage anyways, who gives a fuck? It's just a range-based fusions at that point, and I think it works very well. Wasn't even mentioned, but you know, what are you going to do? What would you guys think of my reaction to Goresh's top 10 list? And I'll see you guys in the next one.